All right, so we're going to talk about the characteristics of electricity in this section. Um, and so let's, let's start off with the units that we use. There's really three important units that we'll need to know. And we'll, be able, we'll need to be able to manipulate these around, okay, to some extent. So, okay, so let's start here. Um, if you look at this table, you know, on the left side of the table, you'll see the characteristic of the unit, what we say the unit does. The middle column is the name for the unit, and the right column is the, the abbreviation symbol, the symbol used to abbreviate. So, the first one is current, electric current. We know by now that that's a measure of the number of electrons flowing along a conductor, right? The number of them passing past a given point in over one second's time, that's the rate, right? The rate of flow. The unit is our amp or ampere, and we use a capital I or A for that. The second unit is our push, right? Our potential difference, PD, or electromotive force, EMF, okay? And the unit is the volt, given as a capital V or capital E. And the one you haven't really heard too much about yet is resistance, okay? So every conductor, there, um, aside from, um, has anyone heard of superconductivity or superconductors, okay? W you know anything, how, what do you know about them, Javier? Very little, but I've heard of them. What, a little bit? Superconductors? Yeah. Um, superconductors is where you have to use a large amount of electrical current to... It's in the right neighborhood. So here, so so there are. Um, so let me say it like this: any material um, that can conduct will offer some resistance to conduction. Okay, will will resist the flow of electrons a little bit, some more than others, right? An insulator resists the flow of electrons very strongly. That's why it's an insulator. Okay, a conductor is called a conductor because it allows electrons to move easily. So easily is carrying a lot of weight there, okay? Some allow them to move more easily than others, okay? Superconductors are materials that when um, they're put at specific temperatures or specific pressures will conduct electricity um, with no resistance, okay? So superconduct, usually what they'll have to do is they have to like cool the material down to, you know, near uh, absolute zero, which is, uh, I won't go into what absolute zero means, but it's not zero degrees Celsius. Uh, absolute zero is zero atomic movement, okay? Um, and when they can get close to that, materials can superconduct with no resistance and no loss of um, energy. Every other material, every material close to room temperature, okay, is going to offer some resistance, okay? Some less than others, those ones that offer less resistance, those are the best conductors, right? You guys probably know that gold is a fantastic conductor of electricity. Gold is used in, in electric devices, right, as a, as, a, as a great conductor, okay? And other things, copper, brass, so those things conduct electricity less good. They don't conduct as well, but they still conduct very well, okay? So, that's resistance. The unit for resistance is the ohm, okay? And by the way, you know, remember your devices, your light bulbs that you turn on, the x-ray tube that we're going to talk about, those are the devices we're trying to operate, and those offer, resi uh, create resistance as well, okay? Um, but, okay, so the unit is the ohm. The symbol is either a capital R or the, uh, that little uh, upside down horseshoe, which is the omega symbol, okay? Um, so you, either one are appropriate. Um, we usually just use the R. Is that what you said at absolute zero? Is that zero Kelvin? Zero Kelvin, yeah, yeah. So you've heard about the Kelvin system. Others may have not, which is why I didn't say that. Yes, but it's zero Kelvin is absolute zero. Um, yes? Can you go over the part of the characteristics, the current, the PD, and the resistance, of like what that means, like what the, like the current means? Like you said something, you said current, and then you said something right after. So current is the rate of flow of electrons along the conductor. So I'll just say it in another set of words. It's how many electrons are moving through the material per second, past it, an arbitrary point. Pick a point, count how many electrons are moving past it. That's the current. If you double the number of electrons moving, you've doubled the current, right? Um, and the unit we use is the amp. Does that help? 
Yeah, okay, sweet. Can um, so, the yeah, yeah, definitely. So, okay, so remember, current's the number of electrons flowing. Potential difference is the amount of charge on the on the um, from one end to the other. The difference in the amount of charge from one end to the other. Think about a battery, right? Think about a double A battery, right? Um, one end is the the flat end, the negative end. The other end is the little nipple end, the positive end. Cathode negative, anode positive. Okay. The cathode negatively charged end has a greater negative charge than the, uh, than the anode end, the positive end, the nipple side of the battery, okay? Um, said in a different way, the anode end has a greater positive charge than the cathode end, okay? There's a difference in the electric charge from one end of that battery to the next, okay? If you put that battery into a flashlight, okay, connect either end of that battery, run it through a light bulb, like we showed in the, in this, in the circuit video, um, you will let electrons move from, one, from the cathode, the negative end of that battery, uh, through the wire, through the conductor, through the light bulb, right, and then into the positive anode end of the battery. The charge, the amount of charge, is what was pushing or pulling those electrons through the circuit, and when that charge runs out, no more current flows, okay? Um, <clears throat> so we're, we're about to look at the relationship here between charge, voltage, intensity or amperage, and resistance in a, in a moment. But um, So that's what voltage is. Voltage is the push or pull, pushing or pulling, and again, it doesn't matter which way you picture it, but the push or pull of electrons being pushed or pulled through a circuit. As those electrons are pushed or pulled through the circuit, there is going to be some resistance to them moving, okay? Like, you know, just a purely analogy, so don't take it too far, but um, like you moving through this room, there's air in the room, right? There's some resistance to you moving, right? You ever stuck your head out the car window when you're driving fast? Or maybe, even, hopefully not your head, maybe just your hand out the car window when you're driving fast, right? Um, what did you notice when you stuck your hand out the car window when you were driving fast? It's pushing back. It pushes back on you, right? If your seat um, stopped at a stoplight and you stick your hand out the car window, is, does it push on you? No. The faster you were traveling, the more resistance there was to your hand being held in that place out the window, right? Faster you travel, that's equivalent to more voltage, okay? So voltage is the push or pressure, right? If the push or pressure goes up, the resistance is also going to go up too, okay? But anyways... Um, the wire, the conductor, and the device all have some built-in inherent resistance. We talk about resistance in the unit of ohms, ohms of resistance, okay? So um, here's how to interpret it. One ohm of resistance, so let me say it in backwards. About one meter of regular old household wire is about one ohm of resistance, offers about one ohm of resistance, okay? So that's how much uh, of a conductor you need to have one ohm's worth of resistance. One volt is sufficient to push one amp through one ohm of resistance. Okay, so a volt of pressure, one volt of potential difference, is enough charge to push an entire... Remember the amp, right? What was the amp? How many electrons? I erased it. Really? Just a full amp. Full amp is 6.3 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Said in another way, to simplify it, it's about 6 billion billion electrons. Okay, so let's take 6 billion of them and then do that a billion more times. Okay, it's a, a bunch of electrons. So take an amp's worth of electrons, move them through one foot of household wire. Okay, it requires one volt of push to do that. Okay. One volt pushes one amp through one ohm, and it takes it only a second. The thing they didn't list here is it takes it only a second to do that. So one volt pushes one amp through one ohm, and it takes it a second to do it. Okay? All right. Good. So um, there's a law. Okay? These are the three things that we have. We have voltage, the push. We have current, the, the flow. And we have something resisting that, like you sticking your hand out the car window. The wind is resisting your hand, right? The wind is pushing on your hand. Okay? It pushes more the faster you go. So we've got a nice little concise, clear, hopefully clear formula for this uh, called Ohm's Law. Okay? Um, so this is the relationship between electrical resistance 
pressure and flow given by this simple formula. The formula states that voltage equals the amperage multiplied by the resistance. The triangle, the T triangle, I'll show because it's my favorite way to work it. Work it. Um, and so yeah, we'll, we'll look at how to simplify this, maybe how to, how to picture an easy way to do this, but this is the formula, okay? V is the voltage, so whatever the voltage number is, <coughs> I is for amperage, and R is for resistance. My favorite way to do this is to, there's two ways. There's the cover one of them with your finger way, and then there's the triangle. I just prefer this triangle, so I won't show the other way, okay? Um, this, the T, this is called the T triangle, okay? Um, and it is useful for figuring out, so what, what do you need? If you're, if you're going to have an equation to solve and there's three possible variables, right? In order to figure out any one of them, you need to be given the other two. Right? You always need, you, 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 let me say it like this, you only need one variable. The other two things in the formula need to be a constant, right? They need to, be, they need to not change, right? So if I, want to, if, if I want you to tell me what the voltage is coming out of the wall, then I need to tell you what the amperage is and what the resistance number is, right? If I tell you those two things, you can tell me the voltage. I'll get to the T-triangle in just a moment, but as shown here, if you want to tell me what the voltage is equal to, that's amperage times resistance. That's just Ohm's law in its simplest uh, setup. However, if you want to tell me what the amperage is, then I need to tell you what the voltage is and what the resistance was. And you'll notice that in this case, if you want to know the amperage, you take the voltage and divide by the resistance. We'll do a couple of these to, to show. It's not as hard as it. If it looks hard, it's only because you're not used to just dealing with basic math, and so we're going to do a few of these. What did confuse me about this before? Um, there was a triangle back when I first started the class. I could there's a triangle for a bunch of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So for this one, what confused me before too was the fact that in, under their abbreviations, the I, V, R can change. So in, for example, the I, uh, it can also be an A for ampere because you're you're talking about the I being an ampere, so mm -hmm. to me what made sense before was just to look for an A sure. instead of the I, but they're the same thing. It's the same so, thing, so yeah. So it's just about... Remembering. Yeah, and for um, not that interesting reasons, we have more than one way to express the same thing, right? Because different people, you know, an engineer and a physicist might use different notations to mean the same thing, right? So we have to just accept that we have more than one way to... to write that. So. There, was a, there was a third way too for one of these. I think it was for volts. There was a third way to abbreviate it that the book mentioned, but we're not going to use it basically. Yeah, it's not popping into my head immediately. It, it might, but um, anyways, okay. Question? Whenever you do, whenever you do that, um, do you need to convert it back to uh, like the standard unit? It or like what's it yeah. they, they give you like kilovolts or oh um yeah so you have you have to be in in in, in the base you, the base unit yeah you have to be in, in volts for example right yeah okay good um so okay this is the t triangle for ohm's law okay and it's pretty simple the v always stays on top it doesn't matter which side the i and the r are on okay so um if you want to know something right if you want to know one of these then what I like to do is just cover it up, okay? It's, it's kind of like covering with your finger. So if I cover it up, if I want to know voltage, right, then, so the way it works is if something's on top of another thing, that means divide, okay? So V is on top of I, right? So if I want to know resistance, then I take voltage, divide by amperage, okay? If two things are next to each other, like the I and the R are next to each other, that means they get multiplied together, okay? If I want to know voltage, then you tell me intensity amperage multiply that by resistance if I want to know amperage I cover that with my red laser pointer then it would be voltage divided by resistance it doesn't matter if you remember the triangle or, or if you just memorize these three iterations of the formula these two things are the same okay the triangle and these three ways to write the formula are the same thing okay um, so multiply what's to get what's to the left and right and divide what's to the top and the bottom. Uh, Taylor. What does the I 
Amphrage. Uh, amphrage, uh, which also means it, uh, the I is being used to mean like intensity too. Intensity or amperage are the same thing. So the I could also be an A for amperage. Amperage is given by an A or an I, capital. Resistance could be given as the capital R or the omega symbol. It doesn't matter which one. Okay. The nice thing is once you like actually do the formula, the, the letters go away and you put real numbers there, right? Okay. So let's let's I I think we just need to do some of these practices um, and so let's work through this. Okay. So here's an example of how this would work. Okay. It, someone tells you a light bulb in your house has 30 ohms of resistance. Okay. And it flows four amps of current. What's the voltage, right? So what do we know here? And this is the f most important thing when you're dealing with word problems. Get rid of the nonsense, okay? You need to know two things, right? The two things it's telling you. There's 30 ohms of resistance and there's four amps of current. You know now the resistance number and the, the uh, resistance, you know the resistance number 30 and you know the uh, amperage four. Okay, so if going back to the formula, they've told us the resistance and the amperage. So that's going to, we're going to use this version, okay? Over here in the T-triangle, they've told us the resistance and the amperage, so we're solving for voltage, okay? Voltage equals amperage times resistance, like that, V equals IR. So if voltage equals amperage times resistance, you take amperage, 4, multiply it by the resistance number, 30, 30 times 4, 120. 120 volts is what your house uh, hold plug offers you for potential difference. By the way, when I say 110, it, 110, 120, they all mean the same thing. Okay. Um, in this actual equation, the answer is 120, but if I say 110, that's, that doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Uh, and ohms, is resistance. ohms is resistance, yeah. Okay, let's try another one. Is it, raise your hand if that doesn't make sense, if this doesn't make sense. Okay, let's do another one. Hopefully it makes more sense with the next one. Okay, this next one they're telling you, you've got a hair dryer now. Do we care if it's a hair dryer? No, right, it doesn't matter what it is. But we know the device has 14 ohms of resistance. So we know our resistance number is 14. So we know we're not solving for resistance now. We have that number. The voltage is 112. They've told us resistance and voltage. We need to figure out amperage. So let's go back here. So they've told us voltage and they've told us resistance, right? So we're gonna be figuring out the amperage. So that's our unknown, right? Because it's an unknown, I'm just gonna put my laser pointer over it and cover it, right? What's left visible in the triangle is voltage on top of resistance, or V divided by R, okay? So we now know that the way we're gonna have to set this up is like this. Amperage equals voltage divided by resistance. So we're going to have to take voltage and resistance and divide. I equals V divided by R. So there's V, voltage, 112, divided by R, resistance, 14. 112 divided by 14, the answer comes out to be 8. 8 is telling us there's 8 amps of current moving through the circuit. And there's the answer, 8 amps. So in each formula, in each one of these, if you see these come up on, an, on, a, on one of your quizzes or tests, right, I have to give you two of the three things, right? And as long as you have those and you know the formula V equals IR, you can figure out any of them, okay? Can't figure out how much my kiss is going to make a question. Can't figure that out. <laughs> and, and, and I could give you numbers expressed mm -hmm. in scientific notation. I could give you big numbers, okay? Um, I won't but I could give you big numbers in principle and you could do it. It's just plugging things into the into an equation, right? There's, it's it's a, almost a brainless activity. You just put the numbers here and then let your calculator do the actual calculating, right? You just need to know where the numbers go. All right, so next one, a toaster. 
produces seven or uh, uses 7.5 amps of current. Notice how they said 7.5 amps of electricity flowing through it, right? They're trying to add in extra words to distract you, okay? They, you just need to know the toaster operates at 7.5 amps. You don't need to know all that rest of that gobbledygook, okay? The voltage is, a, look at, the voltage from the plug in your house today is 115. None of that is important. They could have just said voltage is 115. They're putting extra words in to pull you off track, right? Don't let that, don't let that work. Be smarter than the people that wrote the, the question. All right, so what do you need to know? You know seven and a half amps, and you know volts is 115, okay? So what don't we know? We don't know resistance, right? So we're solving for R. So one more time, I know this is getting old by now. One more time, let's go back to here. We're solving for R, so let's cover R, okay? It's our unknown. So it tells us V divided by I, voltage divided by intensity, okay? So let's go back. There's voltage divided by intensity, amperage. 115 divided by 7.5. Let your calculator do the hard stuff. 15.33. Okay. That's our resistance in the circuit. Cool. Um, okay. So that's how to actually use the formula. Okay. But I want to just show you now um, the relationship. Okay. So if, for example, uh, if I fixed resistance, okay, if I, if I said resistance does not change, okay, if voltage goes up, then amperage has to go up, okay, if resistance is fixed. So the relationship is, if something is on the opposite side of the equal sign, like V and I are on opposite sides of the equal sign, they have a direct and proportional relationship, okay? So if resistance were fixed and I raised amperage, voltage has to go up. Okay, if I fix amperage and I raise voltage, then resistance has to go up. Okay, if I say voltage is fixed, right, the V is fixed now, it won't change, it's, it's what we call a constant. Okay, if I raise resistance, then amperage has to go down. So if two things are on the same side of the formula, like they are, intensity and resistance are on the same side, they have an inverse relationship, okay? If one goes up, the other must go down, okay? If I fix and say you can't, if voltage is 110 and you can't let it change, okay? And I tell you what these two numbers are, right? And then I say double one of them, right? Then the other has to be cut in half, okay? If I double resistance, then the amperage has to be cut in half if voltage is fixed. Okay, so there are, there's the plug it in, calculate side of this, right? And then there is the relationship side of things that you should start to work to understand, okay? Which is why, you know, if I tell you, um, actually, I won't give it to you now, but it's a bit, I'll tell you something in a little bit that'll help, but we need to do the other formula first. Okay, but to start off with, voltage, amperage, resistance, we want to know you know, how do, how do these work together, okay? And they play together in this way. Opposite sides of the equal sign, they are direct and proportional. One goes up, the other goes up, okay? Same side of the equal sign, one goes up, the other goes down. They have an inverse relationship if they're together, okay? Good. Um, let's go to our next, the next step up here. Let me pause this.